Hi everyone, welcome to All About You and today is day 18 of our meditation together talking about discipline. And today we are going to focus on fear. Two kinds of fear we are going to analyze, we are going to talk about today. The fear of men, and when I say men, I don't mean male, I'm not talking about the gender. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about uh, being worried about people think about you, what people can do to you, against you, what you can lose. It's about your reputation. It's about consequences that you can you know, get if you do something. It's fear of people, fear, fear of men versus the fear of God. Okay, so it's fear of men versus fear of God. The Bible says that when we receive the spirit of God, we don't receive a spirit of fear. We receive a spirit of power. Even though sometimes, I'm not going to say that we're never going to feel afraid or worry or doubts may cross our mind or we'll never be tempted because those things, they come and invite it to us. It comes to you and it comes to me too. Sometimes worry, sometimes the doubt comes and pops up in our mind and it's uninvited. But if you have the Spirit of God in you, you have the power to overcome these thoughts, these feelings, these doubts, these fears, including fear of men. But what really worries me is that many people who say that they have the Holy Spirit, they are born of God, they still manifest this fear of men. They have not been using or have not been having this power to overcome this fear of men. Just like, for example, Peter, Today, for those of you who are in the UK and you joined us in the radio program, we meditate in John chapter 18. And it's in this chapter that it talks about Peter's behavior before he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was there in the garden and the soldiers came to arrest him, Peter was afraid and by impulse, he just took the sword and cut off the ear of the soldier. So you can see that when the person is afraid, when you are afraid, you don't think properly. You make bad choices because you're afraid of losing people. You're afraid of losing someone. Oh my God, I can't lose him. I cannot live without him. And you do the unthinkable. You make bad choices. Oh, I cannot lose this job. Or oh, I cannot lose this career. Or oh, I cannot lose my reputation. So you end up doing things that afterwards you regret. You do it in order not to lose that. But then your conscience becomes heavy. So you can see what fear can lead a person to do. And not only that. In the same chapter, chapter you're going to see Peter. When Jesus was already arrested. Whilst the other disciples deserted Jesus. Him, Peter, along with another disciple, were following him. They were following him, so he wanted to be close. But again, because he was afraid of men, he was, because he still had his fear. The moment they asked him about, uh, about Jesus, or oh, you're following Jesus, you're, you are with him, you are one of his disciples, what did he do? No, 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 it's not me, what are you saying? He denied Jesus three times. You see what many times fear do to a person. The fear of men can do to a person. Can you see? It's like this, for example, someone asks you, Are you a Christian? Oh, no, you know, I, I believe in God. But you don't confess your belief. You don't stand out for your belief belief and say, yes, I am a Christian. Or many times you can evangelize someone, you can talk about Jesus to someone, but you don't because you're afraid of being criticized. You're afraid of being mocked by other people. 
you're afraid of losing something. So fear leads us to displease God. It leads us to become weaker, to have a, a heavy conscience. Fear is what many times leads a person, the fear of men, it's what leads a person to live in discipline. Yes, they live under a discipline, if I can put it this way. But it's a temporary discipline. It's like this. You know that you're not supposed to do something. You were told, okay, you are not going to, um, you know, to watch this program. You're not allowed to use uh, the internet of the workplace for personal use. Okay, whilst people are watching you, okay, I'm going to obey, you know, I cannot, I don't want to get into trouble, I don't want to have problems in my workplace, okay. But the moment you, you find, oh, I really need to, oh, I want to know what, you know, I, I'm, I'm expecting a message, oh, my, my phone is not here with me, it's just a silly example. And what do you do? Oh, there's no one around, so you go there and you use it. It's like the, 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 the slightest opportunity you have to do something that is against the law or it's, like it's, it's, it's wrong, you, you are tempted to do it. When you are by yourself, now talking about the spiritual things, when you're by yourself, no one is around. Okay, let me see if my husband is around or there's, let me see if there's someone in the room or I'm here just by myself and you go there and you click in a pornographic site or you, you click on pictures that you're not supposed to click on. Or you go there and start chatting with people that you don't know, or people that you, you know they're not of the faith and you're there entertaining that conversation, having chats, feeding you know, uh, these feelings, entertain, entertaining these feelings, conversations that you know it's not good for your faith. But nobody can see you, right? There's nobody there. There's no one there. So you are there, you are doing things, you're going places, you are, for example, you did something wrong. You know you did something wrong. You made a mistake, either in your workplace or you did a mistake, you did something wrong and you're in the church, you had a responsibility and you did something wrong, but you know that the moment you confess it was you. The moment you, you say, no, you know what, this, is, this was me, I did that. You know that the moment you do that, what is going to happen? You're going to lose your job or you're going to lose a responsibility in the church. You know that the moment you confess or the moment you ask for help when you need it, you're having problems in your marriage, you know that. Maybe you are serving God and you have problems in your marriage. You know things are not going well. You need help. You need help. Who said that because you are a servant of God, you will never need a helping hand? Who said that? But many people, they hide. They hide. They make a mistake or they have a problem. They are facing doubts. They are not able to overcome certain things, but they don't open up. Do you know why? Because they are afraid of losing something. They're afraid, oh, I've, I've fought so hard to get where I am now. I, wherever you are, in your in, in uni, in, in the house, right, in, in your workplace, in the church, I fought so hard, oh my goodness, if I open up, if I talk about this, I'm gonna go back to the end of the queue, I'm gonna lose everything, I'm gonna be seen as the sinner, what is going to happen to me? I'm not going to be counting on for anything else. So what do you what do you do? You say the famous white lie. White lie, half truth. It's not a lie. So you think because when we say half lie or half truth, sorry. <laughs> I'm already giving I already gave it away. It's like saying the half lie. Half truth is half half, right? So half truth, what what is the other half? The other half is not truth. The other half is lie. So you are lying. You're omitting. You're not being sincere. You're not being truthful. You're not being honest. And you know why? Because you still have that fear of men. So I ask you, if the spirit you receive from God is not a spirit of fear, 
fear of man, fear of losing things, fear of, of, of people who think about us or can do to us. What are you doing acting like that? When we fear God, when we see the Spirit of God, we receive a different kind of fear. It's the fear of God, the fear that brings us reverence towards God. You fear God so you don't want to displease Him. You fear God because it's like when you fight very hard to receive a treasure. It's like you're a treasure hunter. And you find it looking everywhere for this treasure. And when you finally find it, wow, you really treasure it. You treasure the treasure. You don't want to lose it. You don't want to lose it for the world. So you can even say it, okay, you have a fear of losing the treasure, but it's not afraid of what God can do to you if you do something wrong. No, you have this fear because you honor him, you love him. Those who have the spirit of God have this kind of fear in them. This fear that will lead them to do what is right, no matter who is around. This fear that will lead them to change behavior, the way they look, the places they go to, what they do or stop doing when no one is around. They do it because they want to please God. They know God is there. How come you do everything behind closed doors, afraid of what people may do to you? And you say you believe God exists, you say you believe in God, so how come? How come if you believe in God, if you have Him, you're not worried about what He's seeing you doing? You're not afraid of losing Him? This is the kind of fear we should have, the fear of God. And it's so nice when, when Peter, we are talking about Peter, so when Peter received the Holy Spirit, his attitude was, was so different, so different after that. Like, for example, I was reading here in Acts 5, he was talking when they were so much used by God to heal people, uh, to do so many amazing things, helping people, saving souls. So they were put in prison and, you know, an angel was sent by God and he opened the doors of prison. They were set free and said, okay, go preach. And he went to preach. And then they were, went looking for, for them. Where were they? What happened? We are not in prison anymore. And why did they find them there preaching? And when, look at this, and they said to him, when you go to Acts 5, Verse 28, look what they said to, to him and the other apostles. He said like that, saying, did we not, these are the soldiers, the people that went there to, to take them back. Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name, in Jesus' name? Yet now you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. And you intend to bring on us this man's Jesus blood. Now, look how nice. Look how nice. Pay close attention to what Peter said. He said like this. Peter and the other apostles answered. We must obey God rather than men. We must obey God rather than men. What led them to have this attitude? No, we must, we must obey God. What leads a person to have this must, to please, to obey God? Openly and behind closed doors is the fear of God inside of them. So you see the difference here. He said, we must obey God rather than men. So they have the fear of God, not fear of man. When a person has the fear of God inside of himself or herself, they don't fear man. Even if the feeling comes, but the feeling is quenched, is destroyed, is 
destroyed by this power which is which is in the fear of God the power that the fear of God has I want you please God let people think whatever they want to think I want to receive help I want to be strong spiritually even if I have to start all over again I fear losing God I don't want to lose God so whatever has to happen let it happen I'm ready for it can you see the difference so now if you say you have the Holy Spirit analyze yourself this is time of self-examination what do you need to do you need to analyze yourself analyze your spiritual life because the lack of fear of God in us it's like a mirror it reflects how our spiritual lives is if you're lacking the fear of God in you you're lacking communion with God you're not putting God above everything else anymore maybe once you were doing that but not anymore so use these 21 days that we are having so that this fear of God this reverence this love may be revived inside of you and those of you who are fighting to receive the Holy Spirit give your all to him give your all to him and he will turn you into this strong person this courageous person you the, the fear of people or losing things will no longer matter to you because you already found your treasure and you don't you won't you will not want to lose it all right this is our message for all of you today meditate on it and be blessed see you next time bye bye